Hello and welcome to this Somerville Media Center live edition from May 20th, 2020. I'm Joe Lynch. This is the Somerville School System edition and joining me today once again is Carrie Norman, chair of the Somerville School Committee and our special guest, a woman who is in high demand here in Somerville these days, superintendent of the Somerville Public School System, Mary Skipper. Carrie, I'm gonna start with Mary. I'm gonna say, Mary, <laughs> We got you, we finally got you here today. How are you? I'm doing well, I'm doing well. Thank you for having me and thank you for showcasing Somerville Public Schools. There's a lot of great, exciting things happening. It's our pleasure, it's our pleasure. Um, Mary, I'm gonna start with you. Carrie's an old hat at this now, so she doesn't <laughs> mind. Um, I'm gonna start with you. You have some exciting news that was uh, announced yesterday, and I'm gonna let you uh, give that special present to the Somerville High School seniors. Well, thank you so much. I, it, you know, as you know, the, the class of 2020 uh, will go down in legacy for all it is given to Somerville High School. Um, really, the class has stayed with it for four years of a lot of construction, dirt, planning, noise, and they've just, they've been nothing but accommodating and supportive knowing that they will not be in the new building. And so it really broke many of our hearts when COVID happened, that it was going to alter the, the things that seniors so much look forward to, things like their prom and you know different award ceremonies and certainly um, the culminating graduation. So <clears throat> there, there has been a group of us that have been working um, on this for some time, uh, a group of staff from Somerville High and parents trying to figure out what could we possibly give to them um, that would at least be uh, something memorable. And um, in conjunction, working with the city closely, uh, Jill Latham, who heads up REC, certainly our, our mayor, um, who's been incredibly supportive and wants to always think out of the box. We've been able to come up with something that we, we know will be socially distant and safe, which is obviously everyone's priority, but will allow us um, at Dillboy uh, to be able to do a, a car parade uh, where there will be a stage set up, just the same stage that we traditionally would have, uh, so that student can pull up with their family, uh, come out of the car, receive their diploma, and be able to cross that symbolism of that stage, um, get some pictures, some nice pictures and some memory, um, all while being able to to look at Dillboy, which has been, um, you know, even for my own childhood, such a such an important piece of growing up in in Somerville in the area. Um, and so we're, we believe that we can make this happen. We sent an announcement out yesterday. Uh, we are going so that we can do the social distancing, uh, use the parking lot. Um, so everyone will remain in their cars so that they're safe. If uh, students are walking, they'll be lined up on the sidewalk six feet apart. Uh, and <clears throat> we will alternate between car and, uh, and walker, uh, you know, with their families. And, uh, you know, we're going to do it by houses so that, um, you know, which is typically when we read graduation, um, we do that. We have the assistant principals present as well as the house secretaries who know the students so well. And certainly uh, the illustrious principal, uh, Sibi Lagambina, and uh, their name will be read um, by house and then they'll be able to come up. So uh, the, all of the information is, gonna, is posted on our website. It's also... Um, Mr. Lagambina sent out last night a detailed description, and then there would be more information that will be forthcoming uh, in the days and the weeks to follow. Uh, but right now, June uh, 10th and 11th are the days that are set. It'll be an a.m. and a p.m., a tw uh, 9 to 12, and then following that, a, a 12.30 to 3.30, uh, and then repeat that on the 11th, and then we save the 12th as a rain date in the event that we have to have one of those uh, days pushed up. So we're incredibly excited about it. <clears throat> you know, we'll have our pomp and circumstance playing. We'll have our balloons and our banners. Um, and I really do have to give uh, an incredible shout out to Jill Latham and the rec department for being great partners with us in the city, for our mayor for just tirelessly always working towards solutions uh, in the city and, uh, and certainly with the school district. So very excited that we can do this for the class of 2020 um, so that they can have that special memory um, before moving on in their transition to college uh, or careers. Terrific news, Mary. I mean, kudos to both the school side and the city side for being able to pull this <laughs> off for those kids that are graduating. <laughs> One question came to mind, will spectators be allowed in the stadium? So actually not because of the social distancing. So <clears throat> really this will be the student and then who's ever in their car um, or a limited number that will come with them 
uh, with them if they're walking. But we really do have to keep the numbers down and we have to be safe because we are still in the middle of a health crisis. And we want to make sure at day's end that everybody gets the memory but does it in a very safe way. Um, I will also add that we're, we're also working with the principal of Full Circle, uh, Margaret Di Pasquale and uh, Green. And so we will be working with her to see they had already uh, planned a virtual. And so we're working to um, see whether or not that can fit for them. They have 16 proud graduates this year, which is their largest graduating class um, under, Ms., uh, under Principal Green. So we're going to see if we can do something for them. And then I was also in touch with uh, Lisa Cook today, who heads up as director of principal of SCALE uh, to see what might be possible there as well. So we're just thrilled that we can do something. And I would do anything for this class. I just, class of 2020 and all three sites have just, but particularly at Somerville High with all they've gone through, um, they're deserving. Then let me put the offer on the table, Mary. You know that the Media Center is a partner with the Somerville Public School System. Um, we have not yet been contacted by government channel or education channel on the city side. Yes. But uh, I let the mayor know and I let his, his chief of staff know whatever we can do to assist these kids uh, during move on or graduation, we're there for them. So congratulations pulling that off. Thank you. And thank you for your offer. You are such a wonderful partner to us. And I know we will be taking you up um, also on the moving up ceremonies for our eighth graders as well. Terrific. I think, um, Carrie, this is, you know, the virtual uh, ceremonies are probably a politician's worst nightmare. You don't get to shake hands or hug anybody this year. Well, I, I'm a hugger. Uh, <laughs> I, that's for sure. And this, cl this class, I, I've known, so they're a year behind my oldest one and two years ahead of my youngest one. So these, this is a cohort of kids that uh, many of them I've known before kindergarten. I've known them through elementary, middle school, high school. It is a, a group that uh, I am enormously proud of. They have led by example again and again and again and again. And long before, as Superintendent Skipper said, they have lived through the most years of construction with no help, of, uh, no hope of enjoying the new building. And they have done it with a level of grace and maturity that has been um, commendable. But this is also the group, a lot of the leaders uh, a couple years back when gun violence was such uh, after Parkland and, and our students organized and work with the city and the schools on how do you protest and how do you advocate for safe schools. A lot of the leaders in that movement um, are graduating. These, this, is, this is a group of kids who have been leaders long before their senior year. And, and I don't wanna minimize what they've, they haven't been able to enjoy this year, but this is an exceptional group for a very long time going no, way and, back. And we've been fortunate at the Media Center to know many of those leaders um, you know, they came to us very early on asking our assistance. And quite frankly, yeah. I can think of no better way to put our resources to work for, than for the future leaders of this yeah. city and this state and this country. Mary, um, you, are the, the, you are the person of the hour with many, many questions being asked about the current situation within the school system, what's gonna happen during the summer and what may or may not happen in the fall. Um, I've said this to Carrie, and I've said it to every show that I've done for the past nine weeks. One thing that we are very certain of is the uncertainty of what we have in front of us. I'm going to let you take it away a little bit in terms of what the plan is for summer, what the plan is for mm -hmm. fall, and how all of that has to be so flexible moving forward. Yeah, that's, that is correct. That, that, is, that is the one thing we know is that it is uncertain. You know, I, I first I just want to say I'm, I'm incredibly proud of all of our staff and our community with how they have responded to the uncertainty and to the remote learning that's been happening now since March 11th when we went out. Um, you know, I, I think whether it's uh, stationing and giving food, you know, which we do every week in four sites, uh, 3,000 meals or more, uh, diapers, um, which are donated and pass-throughs that are able to be given out to families, uh, reaching out and checking on families. Uh, it's just been amazing to see how Somerville, no, no surprise, but how Somerville has really stepped up. Um, you know, we've do, been doing as part of the remote learning plan an engagement tracker um, in each of the schools to really keep a pulse on the students that we're most concerned with. Um, and that can be because of uh, not engaging and there's various barriers. Some of our families have had no connection. So we've worked really closely to get Comcast, 
uh, and hotspots from various cellular companies to the families and get them connected. And that's been no easy labor um, to the devices. So we've given out about 1500 devices of Chromebooks and then about another 250 uh, of what we call Amazon Fires. Uh, so at this point, you know, and we'll continue to do that as we find that families need those. Um, but getting everybody connected, um, we're really going to try over the summer to leverage that and to, to take away through some surveying that will be happening over the next couple of weeks with families, with students themselves, um, and certainly with staff, you know, what, what are the lessons that we can, we can glean from the remote learning so that as we move forward through the summer and into next year, we can build on those and we can correct the things that or improve the things that need to be. I think for the summer, there's still a lot unknown. Um, you know, they're, they're, we are anticipating there is a committee that's going to be working um, with the state and advisory committee that's cross-sector. Um, they will certainly provide to us their best thinking and guidelines about what any kind of physical um, schooling would look like, be that summer school or be that the fall. <clears throat> and so we will certainly look at that. But then we also want to do our own due diligence on this. So we are actually launching over the next couple of weeks groups within our city uh, district. Uh, which will have educators, uh, teachers, paraprofessionals, um, students uh, through surveying with parents uh, and then uh, administration to really kind of talk about what are all the different aspects we have to think about from everything from when the student first sets foot onto a campus um, all the way through the school day, which includes everything from bathrooms to lunch to the way classrooms are run, uh, spacing, furniture, I mean, the, the list is pretty, pretty extensive, um, all the way to the after school components and, and what needs to change there. Um, you know, one thing we know is we, we want our kids back. We want our students back as much as they're missing us. I think I speak, you know, for all the educators, we're missing them um, so much and we want them back. Um, and we want to be, we want to have them in a safe, educationally uh, progressive setting, which is what we had prior. So we know it's not going to look the same, but we know that there's elements of it that you know we've learned from the last couple of months with the remote learning, we can continue, even if we're doing a physical setting, so that we're prepared if a COVID outbreak happens again quickly and we have to go back out again entirely, um, we don't miss any, any time in that. We're, we're much more seamless in that process. Mary, is it, let me ask you a question on that. that vein. Is it fair to say that you actually have to have two plans in place at the same time? So while at you are planning two. for um, a close contact or, or back into a physical facility, you also have to have your disaster preparedness ready in case this thing spikes again in the fall. I'm not saying you've made Absolutely. the decision to go back, but in that planning process, so this is much more complex than people realize. It is, it is. And I think, you know, the, the part we have going for us now that we didn't have on March 11th is that this is real. We know it's real and we've been through it. So we know what remote learning looks like. And this is why learning from it is going to be so important. But in terms of the planning, you're right. I mean, whatever plan A is, uh, as it develops, plan A will not be what it was before in terms of normal. We know that. Um, the six foot social distancing, temperatures, all those things that are, that are likely to be part of any safety plan, um, facial coverings and masks, those are all going to be part of whatever plan it is going forward. Um, but I do think that we have to have at the same time, uh, whatever this hybrid of physical is, and whenever we're able to safely know to do that, we have to have right behind it a virtual, like a 100% virtual for remote in, this, in the case that we have to go back out. And that, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to minimize, that's not just our planning, but parents have to plan for that. Plan, parents have to plan for that uncertainty as well. So this is really something that I think has shaken all of us uh, in needing to be uh, flexible and having various uh, types of scenarios going through our mind. In terms of the summer, uh, our plan right now, um, in uh, community schools I will leave separate, but our plan right now for the summer school components uh, is to do a virtual. Um, we're gonna use the engagement trackers to be able to identify um, based on both uh, skill, but also engagement to determine which students makes the most sense. And we're gonna be doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one with virtual. Um, for, for those students because a lot of the data says that when you have that sort of individual encounter with somebody for even 30 minutes, what you're taking from that uh, is, is much greater than if you're necessarily part of a larger group. 
um, much like our, the dialogue we're having right now, we can have a much more intimate dialogue than if Carrie and I were here with 20 other people. So that only plays out in education even more. So we are really looking to capitalize on the one-to-one. -one. We're gonna be bringing uh, volunteers and tutors in as well, and really try to sort of hone in for the students that we believe will um, be able to take advantage of that the most with their parents uh, agreeing that, um, that that fits their situation and their, their lifestyle at that point. So uh, for both, Mary, for both summer and future beyond summer, um, you, you have an extremely difficult balancing act to balance the educational, the mental health, and the physical needs of the students of the system, as well as staff, teachers, uh, other folks who work within the system, whether they are cafeteria workers, or they are maintenance people, or they are vendors who have to come into the school. That's an enormous amount of people to try to please with a plan. Correct. And, you know, as well as transportation and busing um, and how to get students from one part to another part safely. So, yes, each one sort of has its own planning that needs to happen. And then those have to come together into a master plan. And what, while there'll be common areas of planning across the schools, there's likely also to be some differences. Like, for instance, with the grade spans, pre-K and K is going to be look different than high school. Um, so and not to not to complicate it further, but we still have a building project going on at the high school with construction, um, <clears throat> which, as you know, construction was delayed. So <clears throat> we, we are planning uh, not for the September 1st opening as we had initially, but we are going to have to have some backup on that as well using the Edgerly building, which then also brings transportation into it. So right. there's a lot of moving parts to it. Um, but, you know, I, I do feel confident that um, you know, first of all, the guiding star is health and safety. Uh, we couldn't have a better mayor for that. You know, he's been crystal clear that that w this is about protecting the health and welfare of, of our of our uh, re residents within Somerville and certainly our students and our staff. So that will be the guiding star. And then beyond that, we will be working together as a team with the city um, within the district and then certainly looking for the guidance and lessons learned from other states that will have opened prior to us, other countries that will have opened prior to us. So there'll be a lot of lessons that we can take in by the nature of going second um, that <clears throat> is the advantage of not going first, frankly. Right. Um, and so let me, th let me throw this one piece over to, you mentioned, you know, in terms of the resources that you're now using and the completion of the new high school. Let me throw it over to Carrie for a minute. Carrie, when it comes to the budget, um, you and I had a brief conversation about it last week. Um, I had a in-depth conversation about it with uh, Councillor Matt McLaughlin, the president of the council, and JT Scott, who's finance chair for the city side. The budget moving forward, do you anticipate that you will not be under the same guidelines as you have been in the past with the state mandates? for the budgeting process? Are you going to be going to a month to month or every quarter? I, I mean, is there any direction that's coming out of the state at this point for you guys? Uh, n not yet. Uh, I, I think this is where it is incredibly difficult, right? By this time in a normal year, we would have already uh, presented our budget, had a, a, a robust public process of, of office hours and public hearings and presented it to uh, in a number of uh, finance meetings. I mean, it, and, and we still don't know. And that is enormously anxiety producing uh, for, for the people who are developing the budget and certainly for the people who are, or live with this budget, you know, uh, as employees, families, it's, 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 um, it's Complex. enormously complicated. But right. what I will also say, I mean, when Mary talked about coming up with overall plans and we are doing that, but the thing that she uh, didn't say, and I know it's implied in there, is, that, is not only do you need to have system-wide, district-wide planning, but we're also going to need to take into account individual student and staff needs, right? We have students who are in staff who are immune compromised. What is that going to look like? There is going to be scenarios that we don't even we can't even anticipate yet. So while we're making plans for across the district, we will not ever lose sight of the individual needs. I mean, when we talk about the student trackers, uh, that literally is tracking down each kid, 
each family and and that is that's how we that's how we do it in Somerville and we're lucky that we have leadership that is both looking broadly but also addressing the, the individual needs of students and families as we get as we navigate this yeah I think I think Herculean is the word that I would use to try to figure this out um, and have multiple plans going at the same time while you are listening to the experts. Um, you, none of you, I, I know both of you well enough to say you're not going to be making these decisions in a vacuum. Absolutely. You're going no. to be looking to no. science. That's and right. one thing that jumped out at me, um, I think it was early, early last week, when Dr. Fauci was testifying and he was asked the question about, you know, everyone should go back to school. What do you think, Dr. Fauci? Dr. Fauci, I've learned to listen to very carefully. And he has said, it is risky to send that amount of people, meaning kids, students, population, into confined spaces. And each district and each state will have to look at it at a region by region basis and a city by city basis. And I think that's, if I could speak for you, Mary, that's probably where we are. We are looking at this by city, city by city. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And, and, and you know, cities in and of themselves often, you know, will also have unique challenges like the transportation, um, you know, that, that may not be the case. Uh, or, uh, you know, just within special education programming where you have uh, a small number of students that may need a lot more hands-on uh, assistance and components. So, uh, you know, particularly like with our medically fragile. So there's, you know, there's uniquenesses to, <clears throat> to us and to our city and the density of our city that, you know, we are going to have to factor into any of the plans. Um, I'm glad you referenced Dr. Fauci. I definitely, uh, I agree with you. I listen because I find that he's uh, very rational uh, in, in what he says, but he is not afraid to present the facts. And I think, you know, in, in my mind as a leader, that's the best thing we can do is be very public and transparent about the facts. This is what we know. This is what we don't know. Here's what we're struggling with. And here's what we're going to be getting input on to try to make the best decision forward. And that's certainly the commitment that, you know, we, we are giving within SBS. I know that's the commitment the city's given. And uh, we're gonna just be working really closely together to try as the guidance and, and the guidelines and the, the uh, recommendations come out from the various entities to do our best with it. Well, the mayor announced his um, phased in beyond the Massachusetts phase in. He's taking a couple of extra steps to phase in. So I just, you know, before we end, I just wanna say this again, I've said it to Carrie, Whatever we can do in terms of publicizing what you need us to get out there, whatever assistance you need, feel free to call on us. Um, you know, we're a small staff, but, and the city hates me to say this, we're much faster than they are. We're, we're nimble, we're quick, we can turn on a dime. So uh, my best, best wishes with the graduation plan. And I am trying to speed this up just a little bit because I'm looking at my battery life on my laptop I need you both to, uh, even if Wednesdays at two doesn't work, reach out to me. We can do these at eight o'clock at night if you choose to. So what it looks like is you're both gonna have a very, very busy uh, rest of May, uh, all through June, trying to figure out budget, um, doing the planning for the kids, doing the summer planning, trying to figure out what's gonna happen in the fall. Um, but I want you to stop and take a breath this weekend it is Memorial Day weekend. There are no big parades to go to. You don't have to cook for the family. You can just take a breath and relax, both of you. Thank you. All Thank right. you, Joe. All right. Really appreciate it. All right, so that is our uh, Somerville School System wrap up for May 20th, 2020. I'm Joe Lynch for the Somerville Media Center. Thank you to my guest, Superintendent of Somerville Public Schools, Mary Skipper, and Chair of the Somerville Public uh, Somerville School Committee, Carrie Norman. Till next time, please stay safe and stay informed.